Hi guys, so Brexiteer Suzanne Evans, former head of UK policy who made a failed leadership attempt, appeared on the Ian Dales show where she claimed that yes, there have been problems with Brexit, but it isn't Brexit's fault. No, it's the EU's fault. She was forced back into her box by two other guests on the show, but the worst part of this debate was where she tried to separate Brexiteers from the promises they made back in 2016. Let's hear what she had to say. Do you accept that there have been difficulties caused by oh, Brexit? Absolutely. There have been difficulties, yes, absolutely. Um, partly, I think, and mostly because of EU recalcitrance on the fact that they haven't actually played ball with us. They have, I think, been determined to punish us. Um, we saw that throughout the EU referendum campaign, and I think that uh, that punishment whipping, if you like, of Britain is still continuing apace. Now, how is the EU punishing Britain? Unfortunately, she doesn't give any examples here, but let's pick one aspect of Brexit, the ending of freedom of movement. Now, some businesses in Great Britain, many businesses in Great Britain are struggling to get staff. Now, Brexiteers will say, well, that's because of the pandemic. It's nothing to do with Brexit or it has very little to do with Brexit. But let's go across the border, across the sea to Northern Ireland. Now, in Northern Ireland, they have the Northern Ireland Protocol, which is mitigating against some of the worst of, of Brexit. It's not protecting Northern Ireland completely from Brexit, but it's protecting it from some of it. Now, a top issue for businesses in Northern Ireland is access to staff. And many businesses in Northern Ireland that are on the border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, um, just, in, just inside the border, are complaining their top priority at the moment is getting access to staff and many staff come from the Republic of Ireland, they live in the Republic of Ireland and they work in Northern Ireland. And since the ending of freedom of movement, these businesses are struggling. Now this is not the EU punishing Britain, this is Britain punishing itself and Northern Ireland, businesses in Northern Ireland are suffering the consequences of this in a similar way to businesses in Great Britain. Um, I feel very frustrated. You know, I think on the one hand, um, the, the Vote Leave campaign was not the government. So the Vote Leave campaign was not the government. Now, who was actually in the Vote Leave campaign? Well, we had Michael Gove. We had Boris Johnson. <laughs> not the government. Steve Baker. Uh, we had Ian Duncan Smith. Liam Fox. Daniel Hannan. Lord Lawson, Lord Owen, Priti Patel, Dominic Rabb and others. So she's trying to claim here that, well, you know, the Vote Leave campaign was, was making promises and in some, and some of the people who made the promises back in 2016 as part of the Vote Leave campaign are now in government, including Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, and now she's claiming that, yeah, well, there's you know, we made promises, but we were we didn't have an obligation to follow through on them. So, and, and I remember doing interviews and saying, you know, you can't make any hard and fast promises because the government has got to take Brexit by the horn. When I would love to see an interview where, where she said, look, Brexiteers, we have to be honest. We can't say everything is going to be wonderful because we have to be pragmatic. <laughs> no, Brexiteers were not. Brexiteers were saying everything will be wonderful. We will be able to have our cake and eat it too. We hold all the cards. Um, we can be outside the single market and have access to the single market. We, how's that working out? We can have all the benefits of membership without being a member. Now, this was absolutely absurd at the time and a failing on the side of the media for not calling this out. You know, can you think of any club where you can have the same benefits of being a member but not have to pay membership fees unless you're a friend or something of the owner of the club but generally no you have to pay membership fees you have to be a member to have the benefits of being a member but Brexiteers sold the idea that yes we can be outside the European Union and have the same benefits as any member within it and you know nobody called them out and said oh, then why would anyone be a member <laughs>
platforms. It's got to run with it and it's got to make it work. Uh, we're simply showing you what could be done. And yeah, there have ultimately been failings. Again, I think because the pandemic has forced things to take a back seat. Look, you can't continue to blame the pandemic. For example, in Northern Ireland, it's not the pandemic that's stopping businesses fully from hiring people from the Republic of Ireland. That's the ending of freedom of movement, something that you people campaigned for. But what about exporters? Fish, um, fishermen in Scotland, for example, having serious problems exporting their fish. That's not the EU punishing them. That's the British government punishing them by implementing Brexit things haven't progressed as, as well as they should have done. Um, I, I think David Frost did a great job. I think Liz Truss did a great job. We've what? This is a good job? If this is a good job, I hate to see a terrible job. Signed umpteen trade deals. Goods will be cheaper from certain countries if you take out the inflationary factors that, uh, as, I, as I know you're aware, uh, Martin, have been caused by other pressures. But it's, it's, we're not there yet. We're yeah, certainly beef and there. lamb from Australia will be cheaper, mm -hmm. you know, at the expense of British farmers. <laughs> well said. Yes, and he's right. Somebody's been thrown under a tractor here, and as I've covered in previous videos, nor we, uh, sorry, uh, New Zealand farmers and Australian farmers are very happy with the trade deals, but British farmers are not. Liz Truss seems to be happy with these trade deals. The uh, Australians and the New Zealanders are happy with the trade deals, but the people on the receiving end, British industry, farmers, fishermen, um, exporters, importers, they're not happy with these trade deals. Um, mm, pig farmers won't exist in the East Riding. No. Well, I, I, but let's wait and see. I think that's a, a very, that, that's catastrophizing to quite, well, so the, so we're back to again, back once again to Project Fear. So we have Project Reality. People can't export. Um, businesses can't hire staff. And her response is, that's scaremongering, basically. <laughs> you just have to wait it out. Is it like what uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg said? You just have to wait 50 years for the benefits of Brexit. Absolutely absurd. And these people, unfortunately, don't have, how can I say, they don't have the, the guts to just go, they don't have the humility to go, go away and be quiet. You've been wrong. You've been proven wrong. Why are you still talking about this? Why are you still trying to sell this idea? Brexit has broken Britain. You are responsible for this. You should say you're sorry, not continue to pump this idea that it's, yes, just have to wait for the benefits of Brexit. They're, they're just around the corner. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee, so why not check it out?